Hey you all, I hope your day is going great. In this Django URLs tutorial, we'll be covering how to set up the URLs for your applications, how to use the include function, how to use names and namespaces. So yeah, let's jump right in. We want to make a path for as soon as the user hits the main index without typing in anything after that. So simply, in our case, localhost 8000. Create a path to just empty. And this will lead to views.index. But as you might see, we don't have a views file inside of this folder. And that's why we also need to import the views from the snippets. Don't worry, in a minute we'll discuss how to make this cleaner. But let's just get it working. From snippets, port views. And then we'll go into the views.py file. So we can simply create a new function called index. And by default, Django is going to supply this function with the request parameter and we only want to return an HTTP response and it's going to say index view and then this function needs to be imported from django.http simply import HTTP response manage py run server and then let's go back into our browser and if we now reload our application you will see index view I'll make this a bit bigger and yeah and as we said this view is always going to be called when the user doesn't have anything in the URL after localhost 8000 if we wanted to have a view or if we wanted to have this view under for example slash test we could do that going back in our urls.py file and setting this path to test we see index view now under this route. And if we go back and visit our localhost 8000, of course, it doesn't find it anymore because we have set this path for this particular view to test. Now, there's one certain problem with this. And this one is that we are importing the views from this other application. And imagine having to do that for every single application of our project. If we had like 10 or 15 in a big application, that will be kind of tedious. And in order to not get confused with this, we are going to set this path to snippets that's going to make it a bit easier for us so let's just see how that works okay and now there's a function called include which we can use to include another url configuration so we are basically telling django okay as soon as you hit this path we want to go inside of another url configuration and do this whole thing or this whole check for the path again so after that instead of calling a function directly or a view directly we can call the include function and we want to include the snippets.urls and we can get rid of this line now and the include function sits under django.urls so import that as well and what we can do as a little shortcut is just simply control c this entire file then go to your snippets folder and control v and this is going to paste the urls.py file for us without needing to create a new file and then doing this whole thing over again. And let's just get rid of this path. And now this path needs to be empty. Because as soon as the user hits this route, we want to display this index view. As soon as we get redirected from the other URL configuration, which was the main URL configuration for our project, we want to call views.index. And now instead of importing from snippets, we are already in snippets, of course. So we can import from the current directory, which we do via from dot from dot import the views I guess we might need to restart our server and you can see that it's still working the exact same way as before only that we now encapsulated the correct path in our correct application and again let's go over this entire cycle how this works Django goes in our main URL configuration then it looks for the URL patterns variable and then it sees oh this path matches because the user typed in snippets at the end. Then it includes the snippets.urls. So imagine it as Django going inside of this file now. And then it looks at which path now matches at the end of this snippets. And in this case, we simply have an empty path. So we are calling viewStoreIndex. Imagine this index view is for displaying all of our snippets. We're going to call this viewStore snippet underscore list.
and we are also going to change this HTTP response to snippet list and then we'll copy this and create another view for snippet detail and if the user types in any other number after that like one or two we want to go to a detail view why we are doing this again is going to be covered later on in the series what we can now do with this path is to also include a parameter inside of it we are basically telling Django which type of argument we are expecting we can create a path and this one is expecting an integer and we're going to call this simply ID and as soon as Django recognizes that we didn't simply leave it empty but we actually pass an integer after that it should call views dot snippet underscore detail because we're doing this Django now tries to pass this ID which it found to our snippet detail view and then the snippet detail has to also take an ID and we're going to return snippet detail with the ID of ID and for this now we get snippet detail with the ID of 2 if we use 3 in DRL we get snippet detail with the ID of 3 and to illustrate a common design pattern with URLs we want to go and change the path to snippets and favorite so imagine that was our URL structure and of course then we have to include the favorite here as well and before that one as well and now imagine we had five more of these and the thing that bugs us here is that we have this common prefix for all of them and we can resolve this issue very simply by using the include function so we can create a new path with the favorite that's the common prefix for all of them and then include open and closing brackets and then it wants a list and we can use include basically the same way we did before just that it's in the same file copy them inside of here and you can see that the include function is already imported okay let's try this out and you see that it's still working the same way it was before and if we remove this 5 at the end we get the snippet list only that we now were able to remove this common prefix but that's a common design pattern you will use for cleaning up your URLs quite a bit with web applications it's very common to have the path to your views somewhere in your hrefs in an a tag for example in your html and of course it would be very tedious to change all of them every time you change your url structure and that's why we can tie a specific name to a specific path and then use that name to basically reverse engineer the path where this view is located so as another argument to the path just simply pass the name and set it equal to in this case list or we're going to call it snippet underscore list and this one should be called snippet underscore detail and it's a cool function we can use which is the reverse function there's a similar one for working with templates but we'll take a closer look at that later for now go in your views to pi file and in here we want to import the reverse function from django.urls import reverse and let's just show that this is working inside of the snippet list function and we just want to print the reverse of snippet underscore list okay it's giving us snippets and favorite and of course this is the correct route for this particular path change this to test and go under snippets favorite test it now gives us snippets and favorite test awesome so that's basically how this whole reversing thing works and there's another concept called namespaces which of course gives us a specific space for all of these names so go inside of your url so pi and we want to set the namespace as soon as we are including snippets.urls so set the namespace equal to snippets and now inside of the urls.py we have to specify an app underscore name and set this to snippets and now we can change the name to simply list because we know that the namespace is now snippets so there's no need to include this snippet prefix and to now still use the reverse function we first of all have to tell it the namespace name which is snippets and then use this colon and then the name of the actual path let's just say list 
and you see the exact same result as before. Only that we are now also working with namespaces, which is quite useful if you have multiple applications and don't want to use a prefix for every single path name. And that's just a nice way of operating. Again, we are going to use these things in action and see how they make sense later on. And actually, before we stop this whole video, let's just go back and change this back. We don't need to really have it under the favorite path. It was just to illustrate a point. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to let me know in the comments down below and leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, take care and cheers.